booking, officer in charge of CFA's District 24. Um, my role on the night was to supporting the, uh, the roster duty officer, uh, but in fact as the officer in charge I take an interest in all operations that go on in, uh, in the district and particularly significant ones. So um, I had a role at the District Command Centre. I'm Adrian Gucci, uh, in for the fire at uh, Beechworth IGA. I was a roster duty officer at the time uh, and then eventually the incident controller uh, when arriving on scene. I'm David Box, member of the Beechworth Urban Fire Brigade. I'm actually one of the initial responders at the Beechworth IGA supermarket fire on that Saturday evening. So when the pager went off, we responded to the station. Even from the station, you could see uh, smoke issuing from the main street. The uh, pumper left the station. I actually responded in a private vehicle. Upon arrival, um, there was certainly smoke issuing from most corners of the roof of the supermarket. Um, they had already heard across Big Fire that um, staff and customers had exited the building. Um, the customers, I mean the staff, upon arrival as we're getting into BA and running hose lines confirmed that everyone was out of the building. They said they would, the access was available through the rear door of the building. So we donned our BA and partnered up, grabbed the hose line and we went in. Upon arrival there was smoke well issuing, um, so we made our entry through the um, rear of the building, through the roller doors. I know that it's a tilt slope construction, um, so there wasn't a big chance of it getting out, of the fire getting out, um, and we certainly had our recchio covered. So we made our entry through uh, the quickest the way that I thought that we could get to the seat of the fire, which they'd already nominated was in aisle two, which is well into the supermarket. The, um, we uh, took our hose line through the, through the liquor department, through that liquor cool room, in through the liquor department, and uh, down through the checkouts, um, down through the front of the supermarket, as far as we could get. It was very smoky, it was impossible to see. Um, it was getting hotter and hotter as the deeper we got into the supermarket, into the uh, closer to what we thought might be the seat of the fire, but we could not see any flame. Um, we, I certainly showed some water um, and I tried to lob a bit of water in that general direction, but I didn't think I was achieving much. So things were happening very quickly. So we turned around and we actually followed our hose line back out because you could not see a thing, and it was it was very hot. Um, we went back out through the liquor department, through the cool room. We decided then, myself and my partner, that we would actually go further around through the storeroom, punch back in through the shop, through the traditional rear entrance, I suppose you call it, through the flaps, which uh, a lot of supermarkets have, and then push down through the, um, across the back of the deli department. Uh, once again, it was just um, impossible to see where you're going. Um, we. Uh, uh, I didn't think we were achieving much, the, the, line, the trying to drag the hose was so heavy. Um, we pulled back out, uh, went back outside, um, we decided that gaining access from the rear wasn't producing much results, so we decided to open the front door. Um, the smoke was get, getting even more intense by now. Um, we forced that front door open and we made an effort back through the checkouts, back through the front of the shop that we were on the first attempt. We did get a little bit deeper into the supermarket then, but it was getting hotter and hotter. And as we decided this was of no benefit as well, um, and as we turned around, the, we'd noticed that one of the speakers had fallen out of the ceiling onto the floor, and I was a bit concerned about um, the, the possible um, ceiling collapse and, and being caught. So we decided to retreat out of there. We had a bit of a one minute uh, discussion out the front of the store if there's something else we could do. We knew that. Um, other appliances were en route, so it would be only a matter of time and the reinforcements would arrive. Certainly I know the incident controllers had um, called for other resources from local brigades. Um, the, uh, so we decided to go back in through the rear storeroom and then go up to what was a plant room, which was a mezzanine floor. As I went up the stairs, it was scoldingly hot, so the rails on that um, ladder as we went up were hotter and hotter. The, um, I put a bit of water on the door and it was just so hot. I thought this was, if I'd opened that door, I'd have made a mistake. 
So that's where we retreated back out. And by the time we came back out and uh, had a look around, the other uh, resources from uh, Wodonga and Wangaratta were starting to arrive. New supply of RFS was starting to arrive. And with their expertise, it just seemed to make sense that they, uh, they take the lead on it from here on in uh, because it was limited as to what we could do. Um, I guess initially the uh, fire was being run by the, the incident controller initially was uh, Beechworth Urban Captain in Jamie Nicholas. Uh, when I arrived on scene as a rostered duty officer, I uh, quickly found him and discussed having an appropriate command and control structure for the fire that was happening. Uh, it was at that stage then that between the two of us we decided that uh, myself as the operations officer in District 24 would take on uh, the incident control uh, part of the incident and that uh, Jamie as the Beechworth Urban Brigade Captain would take on operations and work with the two sector commanders. So I guess uh, looking at the emergency management team, uh, early in the piece um, we looked at establishing an emergency management team. So uh, ordered a health commander very early, uh, also got an ambulance on standby giving uh, the amount of personnel involved and the amount of breathing apparatus work uh, to be done. Um, we also got North East Water who were on scene uh, providing us with intelligence in regards to the water supplies. Uh, we also requested um, the uh, representatives from the council from the Shire and uh, not only did we get the Miro uh, and eventually the Merck um, from Vic Pole to turn up uh, but we also had the Shire Mayor and the CEO. Um, during those initial uh, emergency management team uh, meetings, uh, we'd already made a tactical decision that uh, we're going to be unable to fight the fire within the supermarket. So I guess to the community what that meant is that the supermarket was going to be lost uh, completely, so a complete loss of the supermarket. Um, speaking with the emergency management team members, I made that quite clear uh, as to how the community would uh, deal with that coming the following morning. Uh, and both the Mayor and the CEO of the Shire took that on in regards to uh, relief and recovery efforts from the Shire uh, side of things uh, the following morning. Some of the initial uh, issues that we had in, in that type of facility was uh, water supplies. Water supplies were few and far between as far as the main systems go. The um, local uh, North East Water uh, representative was on scene when I arrived uh, I quickly spoke with him and after we'd worked out what strategies and tactics were going to be employed, uh, employed for the fire, um, we discussed the ability to supply water uh, to suit that strategy and, and tactic. Uh, as it was, uh, we could only use up to 8,000 litres a minute on the actual uh, firefighting. Um, the two aerial appliances, one from New South Wales Fire Brigade and one from Shepparton, we're both going to utilise that amount of water. To get around some of the water issues, uh, the Beechworth water supply would last for eight hours at that and then take a couple of days to, uh, to refill. Uh, we ordered a number of bulk water carriers to support us uh, in that. Uh, whilst it took some time uh, for additional resources to get there, um, we ended up using five bulk water carriers to support the two aerial appliances and other pumping appliances uh, in and around the supermarket. What also was established uh, during the course of the firefight, uh, we looked at establishing a water relay from Lake Sample. Uh, it's a small community lake or a, a medium sized community lake uh, area within the township of Beechworth. Uh, early in the firefight, Yakandanda pump and tanker was positioned in that location and they were able to run uh, hoses from the lake out onto the main road. Uh, this made it easier not only for the bulk water carriers to fill up but also other additional uh, tanker appliances and uh, during the firefight we also ordered the Army Fire Service uh, Major Pumper from uh, Bandiana to attend uh, with 90 mil hose. Um, one of the issues that we encountered with that is, is that um, they carried just enough 90 mil hose to make it to the main street uh, but not quite, uh, it was a few hundred metres short of the actual firefighting uh, that was going on. During the firefight, uh, the structure itself showed signs uh, that it was going to fail. Uh, the construction was tilt slab uh, with a metal uh, roofing material. Um, we had several of the tilt slabs starting to bow out at the top of the, the structure. 
However, as the firefight went on, we found uh, that the structural collapse wasn't going to happen. Uh, this then made it very hard to get to the seat of the fire. Um, both the aerial appliances were unable to penetrate the roof structure. Uh, it had been over-engineered from what the original designs were, uh, therefore holding the structural integrity together. Uh, what that meant, along with uh, not having enough water to undertake an internal attack, was more or less waiting for the fire to burn itself out or burn down to a level where we were able to shut down some of the aerial appliances uh, and relocate some of our attack crews to then uh, go inside and extinguish the fire. The tactics used were defensive. Uh, both the supermarket adjoins onto a, uh, onto a mall, uh, so it had common roof space. However, there was a firewall in between. Uh, initially, that was seen as a priority to uh, stop the extension of fire into the older part of the small shopping mall and then onto the uh, shops that front the main street in Beechworth. Um, also with possible structural integrity and the tilt slabs possibly falling to the north, uh, there was a row of shops and professional offices that were under threat. One of the aspects of this fire that seemed to be uh, reasonably successful that was that uh, from the start of the fire, from the start of the response phase, we certainly considered the recovery phase straight away. So uh, from the outset, we were thinking about what are the consequences to the Beechworth community? And certainly it seemed that the, uh, the consequences would be great and it's turned out in fact to be uh, right. So uh, whilst the fire was still at its height of burning, the uh, CEO of the Indigo Shire uh, had been contacted and he attended the fire, see, uh, the fire scene. Uh, the Mayor of the uh, Indigo Shire attended the fire scene. So that allowed them to think about uh, what next for the Beechworth community when, when the fire was out. Uh, that led to uh, a meeting of some key stakeholders the following day, people from the supermarket industry, uh, people from tourism industries, people from the local retailers, uh, along with the municipality, so that from the start they could think about uh, what's next. So we looked at the, the more immediate aspect of things, we looked at uh, how people would get their uh, staple supplies from the start in the, that day and then uh, the next few days, so that, that certainly started the ball rolling, and then that, that committee continued on to um, think about how we can provide supermarket services to the community from the start. What actually came from that was in the Shuring days uh, was a community bus uh, run to some other local community uh, IGA stores or supermarket stores close by and since then also that the, um, the Shire has established a pop-up supermarket in another premises uh, within the township of Beechworth. So that will give them the next couple of years basically uh, to allow the community to continue to shop locally uh, and get on with life uh, whilst um, the supermarket is rebuilt. Probably the most problematic issue that we encountered uh, throughout the evening was a lack of water supply. So given the age of the mains infrastructure, the age of the town itself uh, and the infrastructure that supports that, uh, we were only able to hold the fire more so than provide internal attack crews and it wasn't until late uh, in the night that we were able to, uh, like I said, shut down the aerial appliances uh, which provided enough water then to undertake an internal attack and extinguish the fire. Uh, by that stage most of the um, consumables within the supermarket had been consumed by fire. The value of a pre-plan was that uh, the brigade does have pre-plans uh, for all commercial premises in Beechworth, so they're quite proud of that. Um, they had discussed, fortunately, many weeks earlier about their pre-plans and commercial properties in Beechworth, and they quickly acknowledged that if we do need to, if we do have a commercial fire, and it, it's a rare event, but if it does, we would probably need some assistance by aerial appliances. So the incident controller at the time made that call early, so I think that was a definite advantage. Having prior knowledge of the building was certainly an advantage, but I would imagine that if you're a frequent customer of that business, as supermarkets tend to be a bit of a public place, that would be an advantage to most persons if they you know, they get a, a, a fairly basic knowledge of it. But certainly that, that smoke was 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 very intense. You could not see where I thought that I was at one stage. Um, I certainly was not. I was meters from where I thought that I was because 
I know where, where stock lives on the shelves and and when I, I bumped into some stock I was in a totally little bit of a different area to where I thought it was before so it's certainly a challenge and your mind is going at 100 miles an hour while you're on that end of the hose and it's just yourself and your partner in that building and working out whether it's safe to stay or, um, or better to retreat and given that all the customers were out and we weren't doing a search and rescue we we're just attempting to put the fire